tax-free savings account has been around for almost two years now. And uh, the figures show that uh, older people tend to be using them more than the younger, uh, I guess because they've got the cash. Um, but older people also tend to be more philanthropic. Here to discuss how the TFSA can be used in a novel charitable giving uh, uh, technique is Carol Bazaire of the Vice President of, of Tax and Estate Planning for McKenzie Financial Corp. Welcome back, Carol. Thank you, John. Nice to be here. So, uh, in a nutshell, then, your is this this is, doesn't seem to be a very well known um, technique. No, it's a brand new technique, actually. I uh, I can say I thought it up on this one. Um, with the tax-free savings account, as you mentioned, it, the philanthropic group are the older the older Canadians right now. And what we've seen from Ipsos Reid and from Stats Canada is the tax-free savings account is normally being used by people age 55 and older. So, uh, because they have the cash. They are more philanthropic, but they're also in the investment environment that we have more risk averse. So they tend to be investing in GICs and interest bearing fixed income um, within their tax-free savings account. And they're also kind of sitting on the sidelines right now with investments. So we thought with the tax-free savings account, if you're looking at interest bearing, we don't have the capital gains exemption of donating appreciated public stocks. So nothing's that, appreciating. <laughs> that's right. Nothing's appreciating. So we were thinking, you know, you could set up a charity TFSA and flow the money through your TFSA on a flexible, uh, tax-friendly basis that uh, benefits your estate and benefits the charitable community. So as you said, even though we only get 5000 a year per person, you can nothing to stop having two TFSAs, one for yourself right. and one with the charity as the, what's it called, a successor annuity or something. Or as the beneficiary. As the beneficiary. So, yeah, that's what we were thinking because the tax-free savings account, as they grow, are going to get very big. And with many people, they're not too sure what they want to do with it, so they're using it as a rainy day fund or a vacation fund, um, or they're just saving. So they could conceivably have two accounts, one that is going to have their uh, spouse or other family members as beneficiary, successor, holder, and a charity straight on as a beneficiary so that should they die, that money could go straight to a charity and the donation credit would go on their terminal return to reduce the tax, uh, the tax burden on the estate. Now you describe it as a win-win. Mm -hmm. I understand how the charity wins, right? But I'm not sure how. Do you sort of break even with respect to Revenue Canada here, or I'm a little fuzzy on this? You can. Um, at the time of death, everybody has what they call deemed disposition at death. So everything that you own, it's like you went home today, you sold off everything you own. So there's capital gains exposure. Uh, capital gains tax, any of your RSPs or RIFs, registered plans other than a tax-free savings account will be fully taxable as income. So you don't have the choice of paying tax. You have to pay tax at that time. So with the tax-free account, you could designate some money to go to a charity. The donation credit, which for instance in Ontario is about 41% coming back, offsets any of the tax burden um, up to 100% of your income. Uh, in the final year of your tax return. So it, it, what it does is it uh, actually helps the charity, but it also reduces the tax burden and leaves more money for your estate. So if, if you have, a, for example, a RIF, mm -hmm. right, a Registered Retirement Income Fund, and you're a right. senior and you're drawing out more and paying tax on it than you need, and you're basically that strategy of pumping it back into a TFSA, right. Uh, you could continue this with the same strategy, even if you're no longer working. Presumably. That's right. Yes. Taking so it, just track the money. So the money comes out of the RIF. You, you pay, some pay tax, tax on, on it. that, right? Then you pump half of it into your own TFSA, the other half into a charity TFSA. Right. Now, uh, now what? And, and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> and then you die. So the first uh, TFSA that you have is going to go to whoever you designated in your family on beneficiary. The second one, the charity one, will pay out directly to the charity. So for provinces that have probate, there's no probate. It doesn't have to go through your will. And the whole value of the donated TFSA is going to uh, trigger a donation tax receipt that reduces the taxes in your estate. Well, it's a very interesting strategy. <laughs> Too bad we're out of time to describe any more of it. Thank you very much, Carol Bazaire. The Vice President of Tax and Estate Planning for McKenzie Financial. Thanks, John.